thank uh, Tim and Jen and Dennis and Joan and Garrett and Jeff for that opening song as they let us and bless us in worship as we move forward this day. I want to thank you for being in worship with us this day, wherever you might be. Uh, and today we're going to be continuing on our sermon series on grace. And I'm going to be taking a look at how, again, how God's grace is going to be entering into your life and into mine uh, in 2020 and the importance of that and, the, and the, the adventure of that, really, here in 2020. Later on, Linda is going to be giving you some details about January events here at uh, a Church of the Good Shepherd that uh, you can be involved in. Uh, but before we move forward this morning, I want to invite you to bow your heads and let's pray together. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for your goodness and grace towards us, for your presence that's in our lives. We give you thanks that you've loved us, that you've given your Son for us, and his grace is in our lives and present with us this day through your Holy Spirit. Help us 
to listen to you. Help our hearts to be turned to you, our minds to be turned to you, so that we can see you present in our lives. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. There a newborn cry There in the light of every sunrise There in the shadows of this light Your great grace It's there on the mountain top There every day and in the Monday there in the sorrow and the dancing, your great grace, oh such grace. From the creation to the cross, then from the cross into eternity, your grace finds me. It's your grace finds me. There 
on a wedding day There in a weeping by the graveside There in the very breath we breathe Your great grace Save for the rich and the poor Great grace, from such grace, from the creation to the cross, then from the cross into eternity, your grace finds me, yes, your grace finds me. There in the darkest night of the soul There in the sweetest songs of victory Your grace finds me yes, Your grace finds me Your great grace Oh, such grace Your great grace such grace Generosity at the, is at the core of the mission of Good Shepherd. Offerings are used by the church to support people so that you and I can be the hand of God's encouragement and help. Offerings are used to support the mission of God's people as the homeless are fed, children in need are blessed, and new followers of Jesus Christ are made. Offerings also are given to worship God as the means of praise and thanksgiving. The following tells a story of the power of giving our offerings to God through Good Shepherd. This month, each of us is asked to make our commitments and estimates of giving for 2021. Our offerings support the ministry of Good Shepherd to people, to the ministry, to the mission of Jesus, and in worship of God. Commitment Sunday is January 31st. You're asked to make an estimate of your giving for 2021 to support the ministry of Good Shepherd using either the commitment cards that are being mailed to you with return envelopes or electronic commitment cards found on Good Shepherd's Giving Portal by clicking the Give button at umcgs.org.
read the scripture from Acts chapter 8, starting with 26. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian opian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. And he asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Then Philip began to speak and started with this scripture. He proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you again for being in worship with us this day as we continue on in the sermon series that I really started on January the 3rd, and that is on the generosity of grace and how the grace of God is constantly at work in our lives in a variety of ways. As Paul says, grace upon grace is poured upon us. And I wanted to do over the next few weeks is take a look at how that is, the, the kind of variety of ways that enter, it enters into our lives. But today we're going to be taking a look at how grace, God's grace, is calling you and calling me in this 2021. But before we do that, let's pray together. You are great, Lord, and you are greatly to be praised. You are a God of love and grace towards us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us as we consider how the Scripture is teaching us and how we give, and we're given the example and the teaching and the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus, for us. We remember that, that in this time and in this hour, we might be drawn closer to you and more open to your grace that is at work today in each of our lives. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the last time that I was with you uh, on the third, I was talking about how God's grace was going to be with us in 2021. And I made some basic points about that, and, and one is that God in His grace is going to be working around you in 2021. It's going to be working in not only the circumstances that are around you in your life and the situations that you're going to be in, but it's also going to be at work in the people that are around us as well. A lot of times we see people and we think, well, you know, that person is hopeless, or there's, there's nothing that's, uh, uh, you know, going on in their life, or, or God is not working in their life. That's just, just false. That's just false. That God is at work in the lives of every human being on this earth. Now, they can resist that grace, or they can, you know, turn a blind eye to Him, or, or turn their ear deaf to Him. But still, God is at work around you and me in not only the circumstances of our lives, but also in every person that is in our lives. The second thing is that God will be pursuing a grace-filled relationship with you in 2021. That is to say, He's not going to be leaving you alone. He's not going to be leaving you on your own, that He's going to be seeking out you, and He's going to be seeking not only to start a grace-filled relationship with you, if that hasn't already happened in your life, but also to build you and grow you and cultivate you in that relationship that you have with Him in 2021. There's a third thing also, and I talked about this a little bit on the third there, that God will be inviting you to join in with what He is doing in 2021. And I told you that story about being out there in the desert and, you know, under a tree to God, and I'm praying to God, God, what do you want me to do? And that kind of leading that came into my heart and to my mind, uh, watch what I am doing and join in. I thought, wow, that, that's, that's a revelation right there. Watch what I'm doing and join in. And God is already at work, and God is already inviting you to join in with what he's doing in 2021 to build up your life and to encourage you and strengthen you in your life. 
Now that leads me to the next point that I wanted to make as we move forward in thinking about God's grace, and that God's grace is already at work when He invites you. It's not like, okay, God has got this to-do list in heaven, and this is the thing that He's got to get done today, and so He kind of gives you this, this impression, this leading, I need for you to go out and do this today. No, 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 God is already at work. God is already ahead of us. I mean, heck, if God wasn't already ahead of us, we wouldn't exist. We wouldn't have life. And just the very fact that we exist and have life, it's just a testimony that God is already at work ahead of us. And he's inviting you to join in what, you, what he's doing. Now, there's an example about how, how we resist that and how it is a reality that God is already at work ahead of us uh, in the Acts of the Apostles, in that story where it says that, he, that God uh, is kind of in a wrestling match with Peter and he wants him to go to these Gentiles over in this other, uh, this other community, these people who are not Jews over in this other community, and, and wants him to, to tell them the word of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus. Jesus Christ, and, and, you know, Peter's kind of like, I can't do that. Those people, are, I'm not supposed to be associating with those people, and, and he resists that, and he finally, God finally gets him to go, and so he and some of the other uh, brothers in Jesus, they make, a, they make a, this trek over to this other town to the, see this guy, Cornelius, who happened to be a Roman centurion, uh, and so he was, you know, first of all, he was, yes, he was not a Jew, and second of all, he was part of the occupying Roman army, so man, he really is bad. Uh, and uh, so they go to Cornelius' house, and when they get there, uh, and, you know, Peter kind of shows up, and he says, I, you know, I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing here, but God told me I was supposed to go here, and I don't know why, I don't know what this is going to happen here, uh, but uh, he, Cornelius says, oh yeah, God said that uh, somebody was going to be sent to me to teach me about his way. And so Peter says, well, I guess I, guess I can tell you about Jesus. And so he starts telling him about Jesus, uh, and what happens is that just as soon as he, start tell, he starts telling this group of Cornelius and his family and his associates and his friends and whatever that he's gathered together, and all of a sudden, boom, just like that, it says the Holy Spirit falls upon these people who are not Jews, uh, and they start evidencing gifts of the Holy Spirit right there in the presence, and, and Peter looks at the other Jewish guys, and he says, what is this? How could this happen? And he's, he just can't believe it. That's why it says there, you'll see that passage, while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word, that is the word about the good news of Jesus Christ. And the Jewish believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even onto the Gentiles. See, God was already at work in Cornelius' life, and God was already at work in Cornelius' family, and God was already speaking to Cornelius in order to prepare the way for the, the message of Jesus and the grace of Jesus to come into his life. And Peter just couldn't believe that that would be possible, and that he was just going to have to do something that was going to be kind of at the start. And, and what happens, what he finds is that when he gets there, God's grace was already ahead of him, and guess what? God had already prepared a church there. And he was just, Peter was just the catalyst in that church coming to life. And so there was something unexpected that God had already been doing in those men's life. And they didn't understand where it was going, but it was happening. You know, as I was thinking about that this week, how God is already at work uh, uh, when he invites you. I was reminded of back when I was in Hevener uh, and my wife and I we were doing ministry there in the little town of Hevener in southeastern Oklahoma. And they had this little Methodist church, and basically it was Anglo folks. It was, of course, it was an English language only uh, service, worship service on Sunday morning. And there were some people. There was, a, you know, there was a few uh, Hispanic folks, not too many. And there was a Native American folk or two there, uh, and what have you. But everybody was. They were English speakers, primary English language, and and so we'd been helping some with the Hispanic immigrants that the OK Foods has been bringing up from from uh, Mexico and Central America, kind of help help them out in their poor situation they were dropped into the community. And, uh, and one Sunday morning, I get up to do the announcements as we start the worship service. And as I'm there getting up and I'm starting to do the worship service, there are these 10 or 12 Hispanic guys that I know that had just gotten into town. And I know they didn't speak English. And they came into the back of the sanctuary. And they sat over on this side, on the kind of the left of me. And they're at the back. And they come in and they sit down. And as they come in and sit down, I'm thinking to myself, what are those guys doing here? They shouldn't, what is this? They shouldn't be here. They, they don't even, they don't speak English. Why are they in this worship service? Uh, and I couldn't get into my mind that guess what, Michael? The Holy Spirit had already been at work ahead of you. He had already been at work in these guys' lives 
And he was just inviting you to join in with what he was doing. And that meant that you were going to be involved in something that was just unexpected. And something that was, well, it was the Lord's doing. And it is, as the scripture says in Psalms, it is marvelous in our eyes. See, the reality is in 2021, God's grace has already been at work when he invites you to join in so that you can know the marvelous goodness of God. Now, there's a second reality that goes along with this and that God speaks to guide you from where you are to where he's working in 2021. Now, uh, there are just troves of examples of this in the Bible. Uh, and you'll see there are the listing there, Peter in uh, Mark 1, uh, where Jesus basically came up to him and said, Peter, what are you doing out there in that boat? Uh, I, you know, you're out there fishing for a little fish out there on the Sea of Galilee, but you need to be fishing for human beings. And you need to get out of that boat and follow me. I need to move you from where you are on that boat to where you are with me and, wor and working with me. Or Moses, he's out there tending the livestock of his father-in-law out in the Sinai Desert at the base of Mount Sinai. And it says that God has got a completely different idea for his life. And it's got to get him into some place completely different. And so God calls him out of tending livestock into being God's representative before Pharaoh in a land where Moses had actually murdered someone and he was a fugitive from, uh, to go down there and to talk to Pharaoh about what Pharaoh needs to do and also to be the leader of the people of God and to get them out of slavery and to move them into the promised land that God had given to them. Or Matthew, Matthew uh, says in there in Mark uh, 2 that Matthew is he's sitting in a tax collector's office, basically. And Jesus comes up to him and, and, you know, the question, you know, what are you doing in this tax collector's office? I need you at a different place. You need to get out of that tax collector's booth and you need to follow me because I need for you to be involved in my ministry. Guess what? In 2021, God is going to try and guide you from where you are to where you need to be in order to work with him. And let me give you an example of that. Years ago, I had a, a, a dinner with a guy who is a, a, one of the pastors. Uh, he and this other guy had started this, uh, working with this little church in the central part of Oklahoma City years and years ago. Uh, and that, they, uh, that church grew from just a little church, a little community church, into a church of 10,000 members, probably. Now, if I was to tell you the church, you would know immediately what it was. But uh, I, just for this guy's sake, I'm not going to tell you about it. <clears throat> because he was talking to me about how, uh, Jeff was talking to me about how at this meeting, this dinner that he and uh, his wife and my wife and I and our kids had, he said, uh, you know, uh, for years I was ministering in youth ministry. And it was kind of like, okay, so we needed somebody to do youth ministry early on. And so I was asked, Jeff, would you do youth ministry? And I said, sure, I'll do youth ministry. And so I did the youth ministry thing for many, many years. But he said, after a number of years, I realized that First of all, I really, I really didn't see a lot of commitments to Jesus in that situation. And he said the second thing was that I, I knew that this was important work, youth ministry is important work, but he said I felt like for some reason that God was wanting me to stop youth ministry and go into pastoral counseling. And he said I talked with my senior pastor and, and I said, you know, I, I know that, that this is where I've been serving, but I don't think this is where God wants me. And the senior pastor said, well, what do you need to do in order to change that? I said, I guess I need to get training, and, and I need to do some, supervisor, some supervised work and what have you. And he said, he went and did that. And then he said, Jeff said to me this. He said, you know, he said, Michael, he said, after I was in pastoral counseling for a while, I realized something, that I was leading many more people to Jesus Christ through pastoral counseling than I'd ever done in youth ministry. And that was God trying to get Jeff from where he was to where he needed to be in order to be involved with what God was doing in people's lives. And so, just to ask you a question, where is God trying to move you from where you are to where you need to be in order to be involved in what he is doing in 2021 so you can be a part of that, be a part of that privilege of being involved with what God is doing? <clears throat> now, there's another way that, <clears throat> that God's grace works. And you see there on your screen, God will speak by the Holy Spirit to reveal his ways to you in 2021. <clears throat> and there's a, there's a story there from Acts 8 that was um, read a little earlier that Linda read. And you'll see it there on your screen, that quote. The Spirit said to Philip, <clears throat> go over to this chariot and join in. Okay, so now the Spirit had got him out of where he was in a different part of Israel, what we know as is Israel now. 
down into the south area, into the desert area, and to the trade routes that go between Jerusalem and Egypt. Uh, and what he says is, okay, so you see that chariot out there in the distance? I need for you to go over to that chariot uh, because there's something in there that I need for you to do. Uh, and so he's, the Spirit says, go over to that chariot and join in. And so Philip ran up to the chariot, and he heard this guy that was in there, this Ethiopian guy that was in this, this you know, wealthy-looking entourage that he was the center of, uh, this caravan that was going through the desert out there. Uh, he heard him reading the book of the prophet Isaiah. And Philip asks him, do you understand what you're reading? And the, this guy says, well, I don't know. How can I understand it? I don't have anybody to teach me. And says, Philip says, well, let me get up there in the carriage. I'll sit by you, and I'll teach you what's going on. And so he gets up in there and he starts to talk to him about Jesus, about how Isaiah was speaking about Jesus and about the salvation of God. And it says that they do that for a little bit, and this guy accepts Jesus as Christ as Savior uh, and accepts the good news of God's grace. And they, they see this little watering hole out in the distance, and he says, okay, so why don't we get down there and we'll baptize you? So he get out of the carriage and baptize the guy. Because... And that all happened because the Holy Spirit had already prepared that guy to receive this word. And second, because the Holy Spirit had spoken to Philip's heart in order to guide him to where he needed him to be and to reveal the ways that he was working. Guess what? That's what God's going to try and do in your life in His grace in 2021. He's going to try and speak to you in order to lead you where you need to be. You know, as I, I was thinking about that this week, I was reminded of a, something that I did a few years ago here at, at Good Shepherd. I gave some people a $20 bill, and I said to them, okay, now what I want each one of you to go out and do is, is to use that in order to bless somebody else's life. Take that $20 and try and use it to bless somebody else's life. And so these people that have volunteered to do that, they went out, and, and one of them uh, was just moved in order to help out a, a homeless, a, what he perceived to be a homeless person out there on the street begging for money. Uh, and there was an interesting story that was involved in that. Another one uh, was down at Walmart and, and tried to help out a, a family that was uh, there, was trying to buy Christmas presents, didn't have enough money. And, and uh, there was another two experiences that went along with uh, that, that, that kind of same, give $20 and then use it to somebody, uh, for somebody else to bless somebody else. And, and in each one of those situations, what happened was that God revealed to that person what it was like to, to, to bless somebody else in, in Jesus' name and to be used by God to bless somebody else's life and to have that experience. And the reality is that God led those people to each one of these individual persons that they went to. Now, there's a variety of ways that God, that God leads us and it reveals to us and invites us. And, and sometimes that's in the Bible. And sometimes that's through the sacraments. And sometimes that's through prayer. Sometimes that's through solitude. Sometimes that's through circumstances. Sometimes that's through other people. But God is trying to speak to you and to me in 2021 as he invites us to be involved in what, he, what he's doing. And he reveals us to us what that is. So I was just wondering, would you be willing to, would you be willing to open your heart and mind to listen to how God is speaking to you and what God is leading you to do. Now, there's another thing involved in this. God's invitation, and you can bet on this one, God's invitation to you will lead to a challenge that will require faith and action. And there are many examples of this, and I just put a couple of those up on the screen there. Abraham's call, that's in Genesis 12 in the Old Testament, where Abraham is in Ur of the Chaldeans, and God says to him, I want you to leave your father's house and, and go to a land that I will, I will show you. And, and, you know, it's kind of like, okay, you just go, and I'll, I'll tell you when you get there. Uh, and I know that you're, you're up in age, and I know that there's a lot of problems. And as far as your family connections, it's hard to break those, but I, I'm giving you a challenge. And I'm giving you an opportunity, but it will require that, first of all, you trust me and that you act on it. Or Moses, when he was out there again in the Sinai Desert and he heard God speak to him, and it was a challenge. I need for you to leave the sheep that you're tending out here, that your father-in-law's sheep, and I need for you to go down into Egypt, and I need to face your past, and I need for you to be my leader. Uh, and even though uh, Moses made, I don't know how many excuses about why he just couldn't do that. It wasn't right for him to do it. It wouldn't be possible for him to do it. And God said, no, 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 no. You've got to decide to trust me, and you've got to act on that. 
You know, let, let me give you an example of that in, in my life. Uh, and I get, to, get, that way, get to this story by just telling you something that happened in Kansas City a few years ago. I was up in Kansas City on this, at this national conference uh, with uh, this board that I was the chair of here in the Oklahoma Conference of the United Methodist Church and got into this elevator and people were, you know, were talking about uh, um, who they were and what they were doing. And somebody says to me, looks over me and says, I thought you were charismatic. And I said, what? Where'd you get that idea? He says, well, I, I don't know. I just, I just thought that you were like some kind of charismatic or something. And I said, no, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm just, you know, classic uh, uh, Christian. That's, that's who I am. Uh, and I, I thought about that, where he had got that idea. And after a while, I realized that that there was something that happened at the annual conference uh, there a couple of years before that uh, the Oklahoma Annual Conference had given my wife and my son and I a award for a human relations award for race relationships between the Hispanic community and the Anglo community in, in Hevder. And at one point as I was receiving this award, and my family was receiving this award, I said to the conference as a whole, first of all, let me just thank the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I guess people just took that, the, the, you know, kind of, well, what do we make, what do we make about that? How's that is? So let me, let me tell you what I meant by that. I was given a challenge. And the challenge was to do a ministry that I had no qualifications for. I had no experience for, I had no training for, I had no expertise in it. I was just given this challenge. And the challenge was that in this community that I was in, there was this huge uh, Hispanic community of immigrants that uh, most of them did not speak English. And they were there in order to work at this chicken processing plant there on the north side of town. Uh, and uh, so... <laughs> You know, uh, we started up this little uh, Hispanic information center in order to help folks out uh, because they were just kind of lost there. And you can understand that. And they were dropped there. By, uh, they were just looking for a better life for their, for their folks. And they would come into the office there uh, and they would speak in Spanish. And I know, I know about five words in Spanish. You know, I could probably, after some training, I could probably say a couple of sentences now. Uh, but I didn't know it, and they'd be speaking in Spanish, and they had this significant problem, and so what I would do is I would be there, go, oh, yeah, just a second, just a second, and then I would call up this guy that was in another town, who had new Spanish, and I would say to him, I got this guy, I don't know what is going on here, but you need to talk to him, and then tell me what I need to do. And so it started from there, it started from there, and it went to a, a, a program to build houses for people. Uh, it went to... Uh, a starting of another congregation, that uh, Hispanic congregation, which I had no business pastoring and finally found a pastor for because I didn't, even speak, I didn't speak the folk's language. And it was one of the best experiences in serving Jesus in my life. And all that happened because God was inviting me to do something, but it was a crisis. It was a challenge that required, first of all, I trust him, and second of all, that I act on what he was calling me to do. Now, look, if you can already do something, that doesn't take faith. If you've already got the means, if you've already got the expertise, if you've already got the track record, that doesn't take faith to do that. That's just, I've already got it and I can do it on my own power. That's not God's power. It takes faith in order to move on God's power. And God is inviting you, would you be willing in 2021, in my grace, as I reach out to you, to move in your life in a way that will some way challenge you and require you to, first of all, believe in something that is greater than you and act on that. And that's how grace gets manifested in our lives. And that's how we experience it. But if it doesn't take faith, I mean, if you can already do it, that, that's not faith. So, so let me conclude here this, this day by just asking some questions. Would you be willing to believe that God's grace is already working ahead of you? You know, it's not like uh, you got to start something from the beginning or, or this person is never, they're never going anywhere or, or they, there's people are hopeless. No, 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 no. God's grace is already working ahead of you. Would you be willing in 2021 to be led by God to where he wants you to do? Because if, if you're going to be, if you, God's grace is going to be active in your life, uh, the chances are pretty good he's going to take you from this place over here and you're going to have to move to another place in order to really work in what he's doing. And then the third thing is, would you say yes to God's guidance knowing 
And it will lead to a challenge that will require faith and action in your life. Because he's not going to leave you where you are, and he's not going to expect you uh, that, you know, if you do it on your own power, that's not faith. You'll receive a challenge. You'll receive an opportunity in order to do something for him that will require faith and action. That's how God's grace works in our lives. Let's pray together. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for your grace that is always present with us. And we give you thanks that, that in this day, you're already ahead of us, already working in our lives, already preparing things for us to join in that you are doing. Help us. Help us to let go of our, our, our kind of routines. Help us to let go of, of our thinking we've got to kind of all on our own and it's all up to us. Help us to let go of being close to you and open our hearts and minds to you. To know that you are with us. Your grace is active and it is a real day-to-day thing in our lives. It's not just simply a thought or a word but it's a reality that you're inviting us to live in. Help us to fulfill our lives this year by living in your grace. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember this week, your weekly worship offerings can be sent to the church by check, 10928 Southwest 15th, Yukon, Oklahoma, 73099 or online at umcgs.org. Just scroll down and click the Give button. Well, anybody who's married knows that marriage, marriage can be challenging, and so we have a new group study in January called The Grace-Filled Marriage. It begins January 21st at 7 in the sanctuary with appropriate social distancing, and Kyle Farnham will be leading that study. In addition, we have a new grief share group. It's a 13-week support group for those who have lost a loved one. This group starts February 4th at 6 p.m., and you can register at griefshare.org or call the church at 324-1900. Thank you for being in worship with us today. Be sure and invite someone to worship with us next week and receive these words of benediction. May the God of love be with you this week. May the Holy Spirit fill your life with good things and open your eyes to all the good around you. Amen. Go in peace.